Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to uh, talk about um, asymptotes in these notes and examples. Um, we've kind of talked about asymptotes um, in general before, but we're really going to formalize it here. It's a line, and we're really going to talk about horizontal and vertical lines in Algebra 2, but there really are any kinds of lines can serve as asymptotes. It's a line that a graph approaches but does not intersect. So let's say I have a coordinate axis like that, and I have a rational function that looks kind of like that. Um, I have asymptotes here. I have those dashed lines that we've drawn in the past that um, look like this. That's a vertical asymptote. And that's a horizontal asymptote. And of course, those goes on, go on forever, left and right and up and down. But these black lines, the, the graph itself, will never actually touch any of those red lines. They'll get really, really close to it. So as this line comes down ever so slightly, it will get really close to that red line, but it will never actually hit it. Now, I know that's hard to understand that a line could keep going on forever and never hit this red line, but it will. Um, it's called getting infinitesimally close. Um, and it does. And um, those lines have equations, like uh, the horizontal line. These will always be y equals, and this would be something like y equals 3, let's say. So all the y coordinates along that line are 3. And these vertical lines, those are always going to be x equals. Uh, let's say this one is x equals 4. Um, that kind of is not intuitive because you would think that y equals goes up and down and x equals goes left and right, but what you're really describing here is what those y coordinates and x coordinates are all along these lines. So along this horizontal line right here, the y coordinates are all three. Or along the vertical line, the x coordinates are all four. The y coordinates will change, but the x coordinate always stays the same. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Uh, we're going to find asymptotes for the three functions you can see on the screen. Their graphs are over there on the right. Uh, let's start up here with the first one, g of x equals 3 to the x power minus 5. Uh, that's an exponential function because uh, the x is in the exponent in the equation. And over there on the graph, it looks like a quarter pipe. Now, whenever you're dealing with exponential functions, they are going to have one asymptote. So exponential functions are going to have one asymptote and it's going to be a horizontal asymptote. So one horizontal asymptote. So I'm never going to have an exponential function with an asymptote that has an equation of x equals. Horizontal asymptotes are always y equals. I just need to figure out what y equals here. And usually, the answer is given to you right in the equation. That number that hangs out on the edge of the equation right there usually is going to tell you, and in this case, it actually does. So if you look over here at the graph, you can see that right here is the horizontal asymptote. Um, it's that um, line that the graph gets close to but doesn't touch. Now, a lot of people want to say that it's x equals neg or y equals negative 4 because that looks like where the graph crosses the y-axis. That has nothing to do with it. Um, if you look and see, the, the graph actually keeps going down even after it crosses the, the y-axis. So that can't be the, the lowest point that the graph goes to. And if you look at the table function, you'll see that as you go more and more in the x direction, um, as you go more and more in the x direction this way, as the x is getting net more negative, the y values will get closer and closer to negative 5. So my horizontal asymptote in this case is, let me put that in darker... So y equals negative 5. All right, let's go to the second one. Uh, this is a rational function. I know it's rational because there's an x in the denominator. And uh, I know usually with rational functions, they have two asymptotes. Now, that's not always the case, but most times, uh, most times rational functions will have one vertical asymptote and one horizontal asymptote. But that's not always. That's just usually. In both of the cases for the second one and the third one here, I do have one vertical and one horizontal. But that's, again, not always the case. All right, so um, let's go over and look at the graph. Before we look at the graph, let's go ahead and figure out what the vertical asymptote is. 
So the vertical asymptote in this case, vertical asymptotes are always x equals. And I can get that number from looking at the denominator and setting it equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0. If I solve for x, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, so x equals negative 4. And if you think about it, if I plug negative 4 into the denominator, negative 4 plus 4 is going to give me 0. And we all know you can't divide by 0. So that's the definition of the vertical asymptote. It's the place where there is no y value. If my y value is undefined, I can't have a, a point there. So if I come over to the graph, I can see where x equals negative 4 is. And that's right here, about right there. Let's see if I get it go through there. Pretty close. So you can see negative 4 right here on the, on the graph. So x equals negative 4. There's one of your asymptotes. So let me go ahead and write that in. So x equals negative 4. Now the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals. And y equals, this one is a little tougher. And usually you get this from the graph. And if you go over here to the graph, you can see that the horizontal asymptote is right there. And that looks to be y equals 1. <clears throat> now, there is a way to determine it from the equation. If these two um, variables are the same, in other words, they're both x's or both x squareds or whatever, the, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the top coefficient over the bottom coefficient. So that's 1 over 1, which is 1. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. Now, that's tricky to tell from the equation. It's a lot easier to tell from the graph. <clears throat> so it looks like that, that line goes through y equals 1. And if you go far out in the x and in the y on the table, you'll see that the y values actually approach 1. So that'll give you a little clue, too. All right, let's go down to the bottom. Uh, let's look at the um, vertical asymptote first. I can get the vertical asymptote from setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving. So x minus 3 equals 0. So add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. So my vertical asymptote is x equals 3. And if we go over to the graph, you'll see it right there. Actually, it's not on that graph, but you get the idea. There's x equals 3 right there. So that makes sense. And the y value, or the horizontal asymptote, y equals, and it looks like it rides right up along the x-axis right uh, right here. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And again, if you want to go to the table function, you would see um, that as you go farther and farther out in the x-directions, left and right, you would see the y-values getting closer and closer to 0.